That's Kat. Hi. She's with Wing Saber Historical Fencing. Yes. So quick thing today because one of the questions I got asked was, how do you pick a club? So I have a couple specific insights about how to pick a club, but I wanted to catch Kat completely off guard and unprepared and go, Kat, how would you pick a club? Well, I have very little experience of picking a club because... <laughs> you made me form one. I did not. That is not what happened. That is a valid way of picking a club, though. Oh, hey, I don't have anybody nearby. You do swords with me. He knew how to do swords, and I wanted to know how to do swords. And now there's a whole club. Yeah, it's her fault. Everything you're seeing right now is her fault. <laughs> okay, so step number one. Find a friend and screw around with swords until one of you gets good. If you have the opportunity to occasionally drive a couple hours to where other people are playing with swords, do that. If you're doing that on your own, you have to be excruciatingly intentional about good form. Now, I know there are people who say that form doesn't matter and that you shouldn't drill form as cleanly as you possibly can. They're well-intentioned people who are hilariously wrong. Refining your muscle patterns is excruciatingly important, and I don't care what some elite top athlete from a generation ago said about training people, you look at the people they were coaching and all these other really nifty pedagogies of learning, and guess what? They were doing lots of fundamentals. They just set up their fundamentals in a different way. Do your fundamentals. Two other considerations. One, if you intend to be a competitive athlete, so for example, your interest is not in learning all of Arlo. Your interest is not in learning all of Fiore, which has tons of grappling moves that you will never do in a wrestling match because it's unsafe as hell. Your goal is to go out there and win medals in tournaments, okay? Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Find a tournament school that is winning. Train with them. The people who are winning are figuring out how to train not just the one big fish who may have native athleticism or 10 years of something else before they came to the club, but if they're winning bunches of medals, it means they know how to train lots and lots of people for success. Don't do anything else. That's what you need to be if your goal is to be competitive athlete. If your goal is to be community athletics, Look for personal fit first. Two things that will help you with personal fit. One, the obvious one, are people happy? Does it look like everyone's having a good time? Do you vibe with the people you showed up with? Duh, pretty obvious, right? Hmm. Number two, when you look at the skill levels, does everybody seem to be on a gradation from obvious newbie to there are students who are able to hit the instructor and are nearly as good as the instructor is? Or is it the instructor plus maybe one or two people who are good and everybody else somehow isn't measuring up? That's an example of an instructor who doesn't really know how to teach and the result of which is a survival curve based on pre-existing talent rather than a bell curve based on pre-existing talent, plus how much effort people are willing to put in, plus is this their hobby or one of their hobbies? This is excruciatingly important. Any Nimrod can take a physically gifted person and turn them into champion material. But if you have good methodology, you can take somebody with no talent whatsoever and get them to be highly, highly respectable level fencers. Kat, yes. remember you talking about coming in with negative talent? Oh, yes. So what was that like discovering that learning form gave you real talent? Um, it's, uh, it's incredibly empowering to go from, I am an awkward pilot in a meat robot to I can inhabit my whole body and use it to do what I want. It's pretty cool. One of the reasons if you intend to be a competitor early and you know that ahead of time is to go to the place that's winning is those schools are going to spend relatively less time 
polishing up the people who have less talent. They're going to spend more time on getting groups of people up to competitive speed fast. The advantage of elite sports is you don't waste time learning how to move because everybody already knows how to move. If you've already been a competitive athlete, think back to the very first day, way back before junior varsity days, and all those pointless exercises that turned out to be really important how to coordinate hand and foot stuff. That's where community sports lives. If that's where you live, and this is just a side hobby because swords are cool, and they are. Super cool. Then you know you want the community sports school. You know you're not going to go out there and whip button 9,000 tournaments because that's not really what you're into it for. And if your goal is to get out there and whip button tournaments, you need to orient to a school that will do that. So be very clear with yourself about what your goals are. Then make sure your instructor has a chance to talk to you so you understand what the instructor's perspective on things is. For example, I have a highly body mechanics focused school. It's what I do. That's not everybody's cup of tea. A good quality instructor will know other people to refer you to. If you have lots of clubs in a close by area, a quality instructor will have no problems whatsoever with saying, yeah, check those guys out, and if it turns out we're the best fit for you, come back. If they're hesitant about that, if they're hesitant to give other referrals, if they're the only school doing it right and everybody else around them is kind of garbage, giant red flag. That's somebody who's starting to make a sword cult. Or it's possible that everybody else around them really is garbage, but that's extremely rare and not normal. That would be a red flag for the sword community in your region. It's unlikely to be the case. So if you look at those three things together, you're likely to have a much happier sword experience and a sword experience that's much more tailored to what you need. Elephant in the room. What if you want to be a competitive athlete, but you have no sword friends to drill with? What could you do? Watch lots of YouTube videos? Yes! Practice obsessively in your backyard? Yes! And shadow box stuff out. And save up some of your vacation time. Go get seminars and private instructor with instruction with an instructor who can give you a private lesson or two that has lots of homework. And you can go work on that homework. In the meantime, there's something you can always practice on your own, and it never requires any gear except possibly shoes. What do you think that might be? Could it be your favorite thing? It could be footwork. It could be footwork. Yeah. So there's a guy with a book out, and it's called Footwork Wins Fights. I haven't actually read the book yet because I'm not a boxer anymore. But the title is 1,000% true. If you have really good footwork, chances are you're winning that fight. And you don't need any group to get that footwork down cold. The better your footwork in all categories, the better everything else gets. All right, any last insights on that one? Uh, just to say, whether you want to compete or you just want to play with swords and have a good social time and you know make friends and hit them, that both are valid. There's no wrong answer unless it's a wrong answer for you personally. Very much so. All right, so have fun and go do the thing with Sword Friends. Yes. We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.